Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 36 of 2020 on restructuring the Secretariat General of the Cabinet. According to the dec decree, the Secretariat General, with the rank of an Under Secretary, will be responsible for the Directorate of Human and Financial Resources, the Directorate of Preparation and Follow Up, the Directorate of Committees Affairs, and the Directorate of Information Systems and Documents. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Decree 37 of 2020 on restructuring the Labour and Social Development Ministry as follows. The Labour and Social Development Minister is responsible for the Directorate of Communication and the Directorate of Information Systems. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Labour and Social Development is responsible for the Directorate of Human and Financial Resources and the Directorate of Vocational Institutes Affairs. The Assistant Under Secretary for Community Development is responsible for the Directorate of Social Development Centres, the Directorate of Family and Childhood Development and the Directorate of Non-Governmental Organisation Support. The Assistant Under Secretary for Social Welfare and Rehabilitation is responsible for the Directorate of Social Welfare, the Directorate of Social Rehabilitation and the Directorate of Social Assistance. The Assistant Under Secretary for Labour Affairs is responsible for the Directorate of Employment, the Directorate of Labour Relations, the Directorate of Inspection and Occupational Safety, the Directorate of Compensation and Unemployment Support and the Directorate of Training and Manpower Development. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Decree 38 of 2020 on restructuring the Ministry of Shura Council and Representative Council Affairs, which will be organised as follows. The Minister of Shura and Representatives Affairs, followed by the Under Secretary of the Ministry, following by the Directorate of Following Up on Legislative Affairs, the Directorate of Monitoring and Financial Affairs, followed by the Under Secretary of Research and Resources, followed by the Directorate of Research and Resources and the Directorate of Human and Financial Resources. The second article of the decree abolishes the former structure of the Ministry. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Decree 39 of 2020 on restructuring the Electricity and Water Authority as follows. The Chief Executive followed by first the Industry and Safety Directorate, second the Information Technology Directorate, Third, a Deputy Executive of Resources and Services, followed by the Human Resources Directorate, the Financial Resources and Services Directorate, the Acquisitions and Preparations Directorate, the Central Storage Directorate. Fourth, the Deputy Executive for Planning and Projects, followed by the Projects Directorate, the Planning and Research Directorate, the Electricity and Water Saving Directorate. Fifth, the Deputy Executive for Distribution and Subscriber Services, followed by the Electricity Distribution Directorate the Water Distribution Services, the Subscriber Services Directorate, the Subscribers Account Directorate. Sixth, a Deputy Executive for the Transportation of Electricity and Water, followed by the Electricity Transportation Directorate and Water Transportation Directorate. The second article abolishes the former organisation of their authority. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call today with the King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II, during which the brotherly and historic ties between the two countries, developments in the current Arab and regional arenas were discussed. They stressed during the call the importance of maintaining coordination and consultation between the two kingdoms on various issues of common concern, developments in the region, especially the Palestinian issue, and the need to find political solutions to the region's crisis and stressed the categorical rejection of any unilateral Israeli action to annex lands in the West Bank, which would undermine the chances of achieving peace and stability in the Middle East. His Majesty the King stressed Bahrain's stand against this illegal move that undermines the chances of security, peace and stability in the region, stressing Bahrain's full support for Jordan. His Majesty the King praised the historic rule of Jordan under the leadership of His Majesty King Abdullah II in support of Arab issues and his efforts to support the process of joint Arab action. His Majesty the King's representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, headed a remotely held meeting of the board of the SCYS, which was attended by various officials. His Highness expressed his blessings for the project of turning athletic clubs into commercial companies and affirmed that this process will be optional and not mandatory, based on a study that has been conducted by various clubs. 
His Highness said that the project would help to energise the sports industry in Bahrain and to open new horizons for its local clubs through the support of Tamkeen and the investment of the private sector, all of which will support the national economy. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation for the decisions that have been taken by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to stimulate the sports sector while observing medical guidelines. His Highness also appreciated the positive role of the Committee for Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up, Isti Jebba, headed by the First Deputy President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Athletics Association and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting discussed a number of items on its agenda and listened to a presentation by the Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Ayman Al Muayyad, on the project to turn clubs into private companies, as well as holding an open season for football and establishing a general organisation for sports. The report that the Minister presented also discussed the achievements of the second quarter of the year, which includes offering aid to clubs through Tamkeen, along with the digitalisation of their correspondences and making due payments to sportspersons. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Social Affairs, National Security Advisor, Chairman of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Board of Trustees, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued a directive to the FIDA Car Campaign Coordination and Follow-up Committee concerned with distributing aid to insolvents and the defaulted who were indicted as part of the Falkar Service in cooperation with the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser stated that the directive came in appreciation for the humanitarian stances and initiatives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and in line with the national efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. For his part, the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and President of the Fina Kerr Campaign Coordination and Follow Up Committee, Dr. Mustafa Al Said, expressed deep thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for the humanitarian gesture towards an important category of Bahraini citizens. The Executive and Legislative Authorities held a joint meeting remotely within the framework of coordination and joint cooperation between the two authorities in the presence of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Fazir bin Abdullah Zainal, and the Shura Council Chairman, Ali bin Saleh Asale. The government was represented by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, the Parliament Affairs Minister, Ghanem bin Fadal Buenin, and the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Saeed bin Rashid Al Ziani, while the Legislative Authority was represented by members of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The Minister of Finance noted that the economic stimulus package announced in March, designed to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on households and enterprises, has secured the jobs and salaries of more than 90,000 Bahrainis and supported over 11,000 private sector employers. Operating over a three-month period, the stimulus package provided businesses and individuals with much-needed support through paying the utility costs and exempting the municipal fees for more than 380,000 subscribed accounts. Over the same time period, rent and government-owned industrial lands was waived for over 730 businesses and over 280 further businesses have been exempted from the payment of tourism fees. The Central Bank of Bahrain has taken steps to raise the lending capacity of banks and financial institutions by 3.7 billion Bahraini dinars, making available necessary additional financing, which enabled repayments on existing loans to be deferred for six months. He stated that the size of the liquidity support fund has been increased to 200 million Bahraini dinars to provide additional capacity and support. To date, the fund supported over 440 large companies and SMEs. He also said that this targeted balanced package of support across the sectors has been carefully designed to support businesses and employers in meeting the unprecedented economic challenges of COVID-19. Affirming that the twin objectives during this pandemic are to protect the health of the employment of the citizens and the long-term strength of our economy. He added that the government is closely monitoring traditional economic indicators as well as mining specialised data sets to build resilience in vulnerable industries, noting that the singularity of the purpose of the executive and legislative authorities 
continues to make the COVID-19 responses agile, swift and effective. The Minister of Labour and Social Development affirmed that the government is keen on achieving all that can benefit the citizens in accordance with the Royal Directives to launch the financial and economic package, which affirms the country's keenness in preserving the national cadres in their jobs in the private sector, adding that the Ministry will closely monitor companies' commitment to fulfil their obligations to pay workers' salaries and preserve their rights in accordance with the laws regulating this matter. For his part, Abu Ainian thanked the Shuran representative councils and members of the Legislative Authority for the cooperation with the Executive Authority to develop the country and benefit the citizen, stressing the importance of continuing this constructive cooperation and harnessing all capabilities to support the march, the progress and development witnessed by Bahrain. For his part, Al Ziani indicated that the Ministry is always striving to support merchants and business owners through continuous cooperation with them and to identify all the challenges facing the commercial and industrial sectors, as well as to seek to find effective solutions with all relevant authorities for strengthening and sustaining these two vital sectors and the various roles in the wheel of economic development. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives for Sia Zanal made a statement in which she affirmed that the Legislative Authority is keen on cooperating with all the concerned parties to tackle the economic implications of the pandemic and to safeguard the well-being of the citizens and the economy in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Zanal said that it is thanks to the efforts of His Majesty the King that Bahrain has been able to cope with all the challenges of the present moment. She so expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa for the efforts of the government in this regard and his keen efforts in ensuring the cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities is a productive process. Zanal praised Bahrain's achievements in dealing with the pandemic as is evidenced by the acknowledgement of various international organisations thanks to the keen efforts and leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Speaker underlined the importance of conducting meetings between the executive and legislative authorities as they help in further establishing a mutual understanding on matters that relate to the interests of the country and its citizens. Zanal affirmed his support to all of the government's efforts in this field and emphasised the importance of the spirit of cooperation in the service of national interest. For his part, the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, praised the steps that have been taken by the government to support the various sectors of the economy in light of the challenges posed by the pandemic in line with the directors of His Majesty the King. Asala also affirmed the importance of cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities in support of the efforts to achieve further financial and economic stability in the Kingdom. Saudi Arabia has proposed a framework to end the latest standoff in southern Yemen between nominal allies and a Saudi-led coalition as violence escalates with the Alan Ally Houthi movement in the north of the country. Previous clashes between Yemen's Saudi-backed government and the Southern Transitional Council, the STC, as separatist groups have complicated UN efforts to end Yemen's ruinous conflict and protect its fractured health sector from COVID-19. The United Arab Emirates said citizens and residents will be allowed to travel to countries deemed at low risk for catching the coronavirus from next Tuesday. Prospective travellers must test negative for COVID-19 and must quarantine on the return to the UAE for up to 14 days. Airport authorities will check travellers for symptoms. Those with a fever or showing respiratory problems will be isolated and barred from travel. Travel to medium risk countries would be allowed on a case by case basis for people seeking health treatment visiting immediate family and those in military, diplomatic or official businesses. Sudan proposed upgrading negotiations with Egypt and Ethiopia on a Nile mega dam to prime ministerial level in a bid to break the deadlock. The disputes between the three delegations are of a legal nature, especially in terms of a mechanism for water sharing. Sudan has proposed to refer these issues to the prime ministers of the three countries. No timeline has been set for the prime ministers to meet.